Hey everyone, not Jason from Thinline Defense and today we're going to be rolling back into our low visibility plate carrier series. Let's get into it. All right, before we jump into today's video, let's first recap uh, the plate carriers that I've looked at so far. In first place with its minimalist approach, Color features is the Audi Gear LVZ OVT. In second place with its accessories and purpose-built construction is the Kanai Vicarian plate carrier. Some of you are probably aware, you know that Kanai actually shut down their doors. Sad news for the industry in my opinion, so you can't really get this carrier anymore. I apologize, but I really do like this carrier. I hate to remove it from that spot. In third place with its major affordability is the LE Police Gear Low Viz Plate Carrier. And in fourth place is the Grey Ghost Gear Minimalist Carrier. Today we'll be looking at the T-Rex Arms AC1. Now if you've been hiding under a rock for a few years, you may not know who T-Rex Arms is. Shame on you. T-Rex Arms began when Lucas Botkin started the company as a 19 year old just making holsters. So if you're interested, T-Rex Arms actually has a How We Got Started video on their YouTube page. I'll put a link in the description below. It's a great, a great video that really gives you an introduction to their business model and their business plan and, and why they do what they do. The main idea I want to convey is that T-Rex Arms is a life preservation company and all the designs for the gear and the holsters that they do is with that focus in mind, life preservation. They've also gone into advocacy for pro Second Amendment laws being passed. Now, I'm not here to pass judgment on a guy I've never met or to even judge him based on how I like or dislike his gear. I do follow Lucas and T-Rex Arms on social media and encourage you to do the same as well. I really like that he's taking a pro Second Amendment message and conveying it to millions of followers. And he's probably the best person on social media doing this right now. Now, a question that's been asked though is just because he knows how to run and gun and just because he has a, a large following and he's very pro second amendment does that mean that he's a good designer on gear well, let's get on the bench and take a look at this thing so i did something a little different and broke this apart to look at the pieces a little clearer on the front plate bag you have a small velcro area up top this is a little smaller than the audi gear velcro area t-rex also opted for webbing instead of laser cutting for the swift clip connection area now, I, I honestly don't know which method is better for the Swift Clips, whether it's this webbing or the laser cut design that you see on the Audi gear or the Ferro Concepts. I've used and abused the LE Police gear plate carrier, which has webbing going down it and have not had any issues with it. Same with Walsh, same with Joe. We've really abused that gear and, and haven't really seen any type of major malfunctions with it. And also have no idea because I'm not a manufacturer of gear, Purely assuming here that because the cost of the laser cutter is a certain amount, I'm assuming that laser cutting those areas is more expensive than just sewing on some webbing. If you do know that, please let me know in the comments because I'm making some of my decisions based on, on some of the stuff like that. Back on the bench, we see a large Velcro section down below and on the T-Rex Arms videos on this carrier, you see Lucas and company using placards in this area but it's not needed. You also see some smart designs in the shoulder strap area that are small details, but I think they matter. First, the shoulder straps are sewn to the back of the plate bag. Now, I think this is important for two main reasons. One, as you tighten the shoulder straps, if they were sewed to the front of the plate bag, it might have a tendency to pull the plate into your chest and, and have that plate dig into you. With this design, it doesn't, it doesn't have that. The second thing that I like about this carrier and that design on the shoulder straps is it allows for an opening for you to just kind of stow a lot of that excess cordage that you have. Some of the other carriers that we're gonna see in the series don't really do that. On the back of the plate bag, we see the first design that I'm not entirely happy with. This small strip of mesh really doesn't help with moisture wicking as much as they may think it does. I'm also not entirely sold on this tubular plate bag where the Cordura fabric sort of wraps around the plate. Now I watched a lot of other YouTubers review this plate carrier. EOD Fish made a comment about this on his video. I'll put a link on that in our description as well, where he talks about because of that tubular design, it may allow the plate bag to rotate around the plate itself. Now, I did have this problem, but only when I had some small hard armor level 3A plates in the plate bag. And to be fair, when you go onto the T-Rex Arms website, 
and you go look at their sizes, a lot of the plate recommendations that they make are thicker plates. So if you're thinking about using some thinner level 3A plates in this plate carrier, you may want to look somewhere else. I threw a set of the Alley Police Gear level 4 plates in here. No problem, no bag movement. All right, let's take a look at the rear bag. Very similar to the front bag, but we see the this area that closes over the cummerbund to help secure it even more. Now, some of the other carriers I've shown in the series and some of the carriers I'm gonna show in the future don't have this flap. And I guess to be fair, I haven't had issues with those other carriers, but this flap that kind of secures the rear cummerbund just kind of gives me a little bit more peace of mind. You also have the same shoulder strap sewing location and same opening to allow for stowage of excess cable. Now the shoulder pads are probably my least favorite thing about this carrier. It's probably less than, I don't know, an eighth of an inch of padding. I mean, why even have this? Now again, to be fair, this really does help with the concealability of this carrier, but as we've seen in some of the other videos, some of these plate carriers that have thicker shoulder pads are able to conceal in a jacket just fine. Finally, let's take a look at the cummerbund. Now Lucas talks about the design of this cummerbund to use a pistol magazine or similarly sized object in this first slot, an AR mag in the second slot, and something bigger like an IFAC in the rear slot. I like to keep my radio in this front pouch on the left side and a multi-tool on the right side. I keep an AR mag on the left side and the right side holds a cat tourniquet. Finally, the rear pouches will hold whatever excess I need for that mission. An IFAC for missions with Walsh or a pack of ramen for missions with Joe. No, seriously, Joe loves ramen. All right, so let's get into the sizing of this car carrier. T-Rex Arms has three different size carriers and they have all their specs on their site. So we have a large here and it works great if you're gonna be having some thicker plates. But this kind of leads into a problem that I have with T-Rex Arm and their sizing. If you decide to get some thin 10 by 12 level 3A plates, they kind of swim in this bag area. Now you can really tighten the flap that holds the plates in, but then you just get this mess on the bottom and you still have to deal with this mess of excess fabric. Now T-Rex Arms does sell some uh, backers for plates. They're an extra $30. They might fill this gap a little better if you're going to be using some plates like this, but there's 30 more dollars you got to spend. I compared this with my Audi gear and Ferro Slickster and it just didn't have the same amount of space and excess fabric. So Audi Gear only has one size that you can choose from. Ferro, you have medium and large. This is a medium, so you might be, you know, up in arms. Hey, you're comparing a medium Ferro and a large AC1. What gives? Well, there's some plates that T-Rex Arms recommends for the large that Ferro also recommends for the medium size. So I'm not sure that the designs here and the size for the bags are that much of a difference. For some reason, the AC1 just has what seems to be a, way too much fabric. And maybe it's just the design of that, that tubular design around the plates. Now I solved this problem by getting some 10 by 13 level 3A plates from Chrome USA, and that made a huge difference. I'll, I'll put a link for these plates down below. Now they're, they're not cheap, but in my opinion, some of the best level 3A plates on the market to date. Now this is the same jacket that we've used in all the other tests, and you just see that the AC1, I feel like, conceals better than any of the other carriers we've shown off to date. You don't see the bulges on the back like you do with some of the other carriers. It just does a great job concealing. As I already mentioned, Lucas usually shows this off with a placard and that's the configuration I like. Putting the cummerbund over the top can ensure this stays as minimalist as possible while giving you the capabilities to complete your mission. Also, due to the ease of swapping cummerbunds, this can easily be swapped for a load-bearing cummerbund like the defense mechanisms one we have here. Don't worry, I can already hear the squeals of the black, multicam black on multicam arid. And just let you know, I don't care. So I like the defense mechanism of cummerbund. It gives you some real estate that you can add pouches and things like that. It's not as minimalist as the AC1 cummerbund, but it does give you the ability to keep a placard on here and still have easy on and off access by including these defense mechanisms QDs. So it's just, in my mind, it's a great package. All right, so let's take a look at the options you can select from on the T-Rex Arms website. Besides the sizes I already mentioned, you have color options like Wolf Gray, Ranger Green, Black, Multicam Original, and Multicam Arid. Now, this is a small dig on T-Rex Arms, but what is with the black accent pieces for all the solid colors? 
With the Multicam Arid Cummerbunds, you get Multicam Arid Elastic. With the Multicam Original, I'm sure you get Multicam Original Elastic. But with the Wolf Gray or the Ranger Green, you get Black. Now, again, I see this as a way for them to cut costs. They can just have one type of elastic or one color option of Velcro in the shop and they could just you know, mass produce it or, or cut it to the same size and have the stitchers sew everything in on the, at the same spot. It seems like it would make production a lot easier and a lot cheaper. But that kind of leads to my biggest issue with this carrier. At $190, you are way cheaper than Spirit of Systems. That, that is about it. And that kind of hurts me to say because I honestly love T-Rex Arms. I love what they're doing. I love the community that they have built up and the pro Second Amendment direction that they are taking their company, their state of Tennessee, and, and even social media. It's fantastic what they're doing. It just hurts that their product is so expensive. Don't get me wrong, this is a good plate carrier, but it's sold at a premium price. Now, I'm not joking around here. If you sign up for our Telegram deals where I, I scour the internet, I try to find deals every day, I regularly see the Grey Ghost Gear Minimalist Carrier for one third or even one fourth the price of this carrier. And I also see the, the Audi Gear Carrier regularly at $110 to $130. And because of that, this carrier is unfortunately going in last place in our ranking. Now I'm sure that's gonna hurt some feelings, but honestly, if they were to somehow find a way to drop the price 20 or $30, that would change my mind because then you're kind of on equal footing with, let's say the Audi Gear or the Ferro Slickster. The other issue that I see here is you don't really see a reduction in price for all the cost saving things that they're doing. The black Velcro and the black elastic on their solid color plate carriers. You would think they probably went that route to save some, save some time and save some money. But you don't, you don't see that. You don't see that reflected in their prices. One other thing that you see with carriers like the Audi Gear, if you go onto the Audi Gear website, the Multicam or the Multicam Black is $190, $200, but the solid colors are 150 160 you don't see that with t-rex arms so if they were to drop the price of let's say their black ranger green and uh, wolf grade down to 150 i would rate this carrier differently but at 190 dollars there's just better carriers out there that are cheaper and i feel like i'd be doing a disservice to our viewers if i were to rate it any higher than that well that wraps it up for us today guys i hope this review helped in your purchasing decisions I just want to say thanks to all of our Patreons and our YouTube members. You guys make this stuff possible and make us get all this good, cool gear that we can show off to you. And thanks to everyone that likes, comments, and subscribes. Comment down below let me know what you think about this carrier and if you have one, how you feel differently than I do. Alright guys, catch you later. Let you know, I don't care.